गजाननम भूतगणादिसेत कपिजंबू फलसार भक्षित उमासुत शोक विनाशकारण नमा विघ्नेश्वर पादपंकज गुरब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्मा तस्म श्री गुरव नम वसुदेव सुदम देव कंस चाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गुरु so last uh, lesson we concluded with verse 37 part of the chapter 2 so today we start with uh, the verse 39 uh, 38 38 uh, as usual we will give a short overview of what we are going to talk about today uh, in today's lesson Lord Krishna introduces karma yoga. So far, what he was talking about the philosophy, Sankhya, Sankhya. So now he's shifting gear gradually, and he starts with more practical aspects of living. He talks about uh, human nature, the qualities of a human being, and how to develop the right attitudes. What are the right attitudes in a group people also wrong attitudes and he goes ahead to define what is karma yoga you will find lot of uh, yogas coming up in gita and uh, <clears throat> this part of it is called karma yoga earlier we talked about jnana yoga he is now introducing you to karma yoga and also giving you a very quick introduction to karma yoga and what are the benefits of karma yoga so that is what we are going to cover in, in, in today's uh, lesson so let's move on to the verse 38 as usual we start with uh, me reciting it and then you follow it सुख दुखे समे सुख दुखे समे लाभ लाभ जया जय लाभ लाभ जया जय तथो युद्धा युजस्व तथो युद्धा युजस्व नैवं पापम अपाप्यसी नैवं पापम अपाप्यसी दीज आर फैली सिंपल वर्ड्स बट they have a lot of meaning in it now as i said lord krishna has uh, two fold objectives what are the two objectives first to get us not to do first is to remove his sorrow so, what is called shoka nivritti he is already very sad because he doesn't want to really kill his own kith and kin so he is very sad and almost tragic heartbroken he wants to remove that sorrow and that arjun to fight a dharma yuddha mm. that is his two fold objective now how to meet those objectives i told you what are the approaches that he has been adopting he has been adopting a philosophical approach which is difficult an ethical or a practical approach dharmic and also a social approach telling him about what is his duty and all that remember yep. last time so in this 38th verse krishna talks about the attitude one should adopt for a happy living now this is not only to arjuna it is applicable to almost all living beings in today's modern world because we are we have many things which have been historically wrong mm. and which we have to put it on the right track so what he says here is applicable to all not necessarily only to arjuna so here he emphasizes what is same krutva same means sama means what same equal samatvam means equal it is 
equal or the right word would be equipoise. What Kanchi Paramahansa once said mm. to a foreigner who came, he didn't know the correct word and he said, do you think it's equipoise? And he said, yes, that's the right word. So that is equipoise. That means balanced in a state of equilibrium in the mind. What kind of equilibrium it is? Something you ought to say, being cool as a cucumber as they call it, you know. Very cool under any circumstance. There are some people who don't get ruffled or rattled by anything. You can see them. They don't uh, even raise their voice. They are, you can't make out from their face whether they have got any uh, anger or they have got uh, anything in their mind. You can't make out. So it is very cool as a cucumber. And you have uh, people who are intelligent, who are judged by what is called IQ. What is IQ? Intelligent. Intelligent quotient. Now, scientists have discovered one more quotient. And what is it? EQ. The EQ. Emotional quotient. And in fact, people say emotional quotient is superior to intellectual quotient. If you don't have uh, emotional equilibrium, then your IQ is doesn't make it very effective at work. So, the person of uh, emotional intelligence or emotional uh, quotient is able to face life in a much better manner. So, we talk about experiences. People have happy experiences, but more often very unhappy experiences also. Sad experiences. Now, these happen not really because they are intended to, but you know, when you want to sharpen an axe, what do you use? Do you use a soft cotton pad to do it? What do you use? Sharp. You use stone. a much harder a grinding stone. Grinding stone. Only then the axe gets sharpened. So actually, if you look at people who are very successful, they are the people who have made a lot of mistakes, who learned from their experience. And then they are using that experience, which is a sharpened axe, to do further work. That's how it happens. So you see, some of these people uh, who handle even colossal failures, like uh, the chief minister in Tamil Nadu, for example. <laughs> so I'm just giving you one stray example. She met with colossal failures, I mean, even until recently, but she's emerged victorious. How? It's a different question, but she has emerged victorious. But under all these circumstances, she has maintained cool. She has never lost her temper. She has always kept her EQ in balance. So, when you meet people of that type, you can understand how the mental equilibrium is maintained. And in this particular verse, what Krishna advises is that one should be able to the extremes. Extreme means profit and loss, happiness and sorrow, victory and defeat, sizzling summer like you have in the Middle East, and also wild winters like what you have in Chicago. In the same level of your mental comfort, not maybe not physical but mental. And wealth and poverty, people go through ups and downs in life, comfort, discomfort, applause and adversity, all in the same level of mental equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Now, instead of telling how to succeed, Lord Krishna here tells you how to face rough waves as you see in the sea. You know, you go for sea bathing, mm -hmm. you have wild waves coming up. And if you are not skillful to handle those waves, you will go under the sea. So you must be able to face them and for which you have to develop the skills of a person who can really meet those waves and be able to come out. Mm -hmm. I had a boss who used to tell me how to swim with the sharks and stay alive. <laughs> So you have corporate sharks when you go into companies who can eat you alive. But you have to swim with them and stay alive. 
That is where the skill comes in. It's very difficult, not easy. <laughs> and I had a shark on my boss. <laughs> so, uh, to go with the meaning Sukha Dukhe. Mm. Sukha Dukhe is very easy to understand in pain or pleasure. Sabe Kritva, treating them equally. Nabha Alabhav, profit and loss. Jaya Ajayo, victory and loss. Tato Yudhaya Yudjaswa, Naivam Papam Avapyasi. So, you, Yudhaya means in battle. You just were engage yourself in the battle. And Naivam Papam Avapyasi, meaning you will not incur any sins. So, it's fairly easy to understand. So, the gist of it is treating pain and pleasure. Gain and loss, victory and defeat, all equally engage yourself in the battle and thus you will not incur any sin. So that is the, the meaning of this. Now, to the one who really is like treating all this equilibrium, is strong in mind and body, the challenges are like uh, eating halwa. <laughs> Yesterday we went to a bhajan where there were two murdangams, you know, and we could see how they were reveling to play the murdangam one against the other. And then the uh, the main artist who was really delivering the bhajans, he gave very intricate, complex tunes, but the murdangam was up to it. He was really enjoying it. So people thrive on challenges. I remember in the 60s, there was a very famous car racing expert. You may not know it. His name was Sterling Moss. He became a knight. It's called Sir Sterling Moss. He started racing at the age of 18. Wasn't he the Isle of Man uh, races? Oh, he's a Britisher actually. Yeah, Isle of Man. Britisher and uh, uh, I remember having said, one race, he broke all his bones and he was confined to bed for almost more than one year. He came back again, started racing again. He participated in about 500 races. More than half of them he lost. Yet, he didn't lose heart. Went again and again. He pursued his idol, mm. ideal, the goal of enjoying mm. the racing. He was not looking at just victory alone. Yesterday, the race horse won the triple crown. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a victory. Pharaoh. And something we attempted third time. It's the third time they won. Uh, th three times they attempted, but mm -hmm. it's the final mm -hmm. time they, Pharaoh. they won it. So, you have people who were pursuing a goal relentlessly with determination. Whatever happens, failures don't deter them. They take everything the same way. So that's what it is, uh, is uh, uh, telling this here. Now this uh, Sir Sterling Moss is still alive. He's now in business <laughs> in, the UK, in the UK. Yeah, I think some sports business or something. I'm yeah. Not sure. So let's move on to the next one. Esha to abhita sanke Esha to abhita sanke Buddhir yoke tu maam shrunu Buddhir yoke tu maam shrunu Buddhaya yukto jaya partha Buddhaya yukto jaya partha Karma bandham prahasyasi Karma bandham prahasyasi It's a beautiful verse where actually Krishna is turning directions now. He is turning to explain the techniques of living. Now, Gita is not just a philosophy alone. It teaches you the art of living. And when Vyasacharya, who composed it, he uh, compiled all the four Vedas. Then he compiled the Brahma Sutras. At the end of the Vedas, you have Upanishads, Vedanta. Ultimately, he thought, for a common man, it is very difficult for him to read all the four Vedas. <laughs> so there was something when he wrote Mahabharatam, 
and then the Bhagavad Gita came, is actually giving you an essence of the Vedas presented so beautifully in a manner which a common man will be able to follow without difficulty. So he is going step by step that you can't just plunge into Jnana Yoga because it is too difficult. So he is now giving the techniques of living and uh, he moves from the Sankhya Yoga, the, what is the logic of reasoning to comprehend absolute truth or self-realization or self-reality uh, self or uh, the absolute reality. From that he goes to the technique of attaining wisdom through work. That is karma means work, karma yoga. Now, question arises, why should really Krishna start with karma yoga after talking about jnana yoga? Now, in rocket science, uh, it is very difficult to understand jnana yoga for a common man. Some of you might have felt it last time when we started with the, the earlier verses that uh, fact it, it gave rise to many questions too. The Vedanta is said to be very highly complex. Tamil is Vedanta is It's a very dry subject, you know. Nobody likes to study that because it is talking something above abstract, it. Yeah. <laughs> abstract. You are right, abstract. So some say, all right, let us think about it after retirement. In fact, one of the persons says, that's not in the way. We can do it after we are 65 or something, but then by the time it's too late. <laughs> so, even though Jnana Yoga is for liberation, it is very difficult for most people and uh, Karma Yoga provides a shortcut, an easier mode of entrance mm. into Jnana Yoga, so step by step. Mm. So it's like uh, appearing for GMAT or GRE to qualify, getting into a big university. So unless you have the basics, right, it's very difficult. So in order to make Jnana Yoga easier, the mind has to be prepared suitably, like preparing the soil, and Karma Yoga prepares the mind to reach higher levels. So you need to go step by step, and he's talking about that. Again, we'll go word by word in the meanings, Sankhya. Sankhya is referring really to the, the truth, Sankhya Yoga, mm -hmm. we heard it. The truth revealed in Upanishads, which reveals to the mm -hmm. Atma. Buddhihi, everybody knows, is, is knowledge. Sankhya Buddhihi is self-knowledge. Mm -hmm. Sankhya Buddhihi. Yogi Tvumam should listen to Karma Yoga. Shruva means to listen. Buddhaya Yukto. Buddhaya, <clears throat> which is, you have to listen with your your intelligence, with your knowledge. Yatha Partha, Arjuna, Karma Bandham Prahasyasi, you will cast off your Karma Band, Karma Bandham, by understanding, by listening to the Karma Yoga, which I is going to explain. Mm -hmm. So, in, in short, what he means is the theory of self-knowledge of Sankhya is already, mm -hmm. I have told you that, declared to you. Hear this, what I am going to say, and endowed with this knowledge, what I am going to give you, you shall remove your bonds of karma. Mm -hmm. So, continuing, the verse, Number forty. Neha vikrama nasho se. Neha vikrama nasho se. Pratyavayo na vidyate. Pratyavayo na vidyate. Swalpam apyasya dharmasya. Swalpam apyasya dharmasya. Trayate mahato bayat. Trayate mahato bayat. Uh, Krishna continues explaining what is so special about Karma Yoga, what is the attractiveness 
of karma yoga. You will find uh, we get confused with a lot of rituals. We do many, many rituals like uh, homams, pujai, sagasana marchanai and all that. Now to get the benefit from these rituals, one has to complete them. If you are going to do Chanti Homam, for example, you can't just stop halfway and then say, alright, tomorrow we'll see something else or next year we'll do it. It has to be complete. Similarly, if you take some medicines, if you take antibiotics, for example, you have to go through a complete course of medicines. If you take only one and tomorrow you don't take it, it doesn't have the effect. On the contrary, it may give you some bad effects, side effects, may produce some headache or stomachache, whatever. So rituals which are prescribed in the Vedas have to be performed in full in order to get the benefit of that. So, what is so relevance to Karma Yoga? But in the path of Karma, Krishna says here, there is no such danger of losing the entire benefits, even if you do half. Your efforts are not wasted. Nor do you have any adverse effects by doing it partially. Now, which is very attractive because you can't find the time to do a elaborate ritual. But if there is something which is giving you a shortcut, well, it is flexible. I can do a little bit today and maybe tomorrow I can continue. It's very good. It's like chanting Sahasranamam. You know, you chant Sahasranamam. You are not doing it for any particular purpose. You say, I'm going to do Sahasranamam, Pretty Vishnu Sahasranamam. I'll read it. And then I find that it is really giving me some little peace. I'm not doing it any specific purpose to uh, win a lottery or uh, uh, buy a new home or anything. It is just a casual kind of approach which is easy, it takes about 15-20 minutes for you, which is not difficult. Even that, there is no compulsion that you must complete it. Supposing you get a phone call, suddenly you go away also, it is not going to produce any adverse effect for you. But you can't do the same thing with rituals. Mm. Your home is there, even if you got a phone call, you just can't go. You have to finish it. Because the deities whom you are worshipping will get offended if you stop it halfway. That is why you have to use them, whatever rituals is prescribed, you have to complete it. You can't leave it halfway. So, Krishna here is saying that is one attraction here. So, let's go to the meaning. Ne, ne is not. Iha in this. Kramanasosti. Abhi Kramanasosti means loss of effort. There is no loss of effort. Pratyavayo na vidyate. <coughs> Pratyavayo means adverse results. Pratya. Are you? No. Na vidyate. There are no adverse effects. Swalpam apyasya. Swalpam means. Little <laughs> journey. Correct. Everybody knows it. Apyasya. <coughs> Well, <coughs> very little even is actually api and asya, go together apyasya. Even of this duty, trayate mahato baya, trayate means protection. Paritranaya sadhunam, you remember that? It is, tra is a verb for protection. Trayate mahato baya, it protects you from big threats of big fear. So even if you chant or do this Karma Yoga, follow the path, with not completion, you still get protected and there are no adverse effects. So that is why he says this particular approach is better because it doesn't have the uh, uh, very strict restrictions of having to complete and if you don't, mm -hmm. the adverse effects take place. So, continuing further, 
व्यवसाय आत्मिका बुद्धिर व्यवसाय आत्मिका बुद्धिर एके है गुरु नंदन एके है गुरु नंदन बहु शाखा हनंतश्च बहु शाखा हनंतश्च बुद्धयो व्यवसायिनाम बुद्धयो व्यवसायिनाम सो दिस इज again <clears throat> related to the confusion arising out of many scriptures which recommend so many ways of attaining benefits like somebody says uh, you have to perform uh, the navagraha homa only then you will get uh, relieved or somebody says uh, you do just meditation that is a good route for you and the third person says nama sankirtanam is the best there is no other way for salvation so you have people who are recommending yoga better go to yoga mantra and start learning yoga and there are also astrologers you have a problem don't do any yoga you go to astrologer he will recommend you why the price is them to wear uh, some ring with pushparagam or uh, coral stones and wear rudraksham or something he will say so you have your uh, mind goes like a monkey jumping from one to another if astrologer doesn't give you a favorable report then you go to yes yeah, shastri girl who gives you another solution so today we see it in practice that people get confused there are so many routes prescribed you don't know which one is really the ideal one for you so one needs some kind of a clarity regarding the means and you know i have a friend of mine who used to say that i will not even go to the toilet without consulting my guru not <laughs> your name sake <laughs> not you name sake he used to be our neighbors mm. Once I met him in Chennai after a long time, and uh, said, uh, his guru is so important to me that I will not even go to the restroom without asking. That is a kind of affiliation, you can see. So ultimate goal everybody is seeking is freedom and happiness. As it happens with uh, any living being, birds fly away when they get wings, and the baby also once it starts walking, it uh, runs away from mm. the mom. wants freedom it's not physical freedom alone but mental freedom to be able to the discovery of one's own self there is an inner urge to mm. discover yourself what is your strength such a knowledge of self requires a tremendous preparation you know it's not uh, easy and one must be really qualified to that so practicing religion without learning some of the basics is not the right way so krishna in this case criticizes those people who lead you into the confusion and who are themselves confused with endless thoughts and advises the path of karma yoga and what steps you should take to progress further in karma yoga so let's so and see the meanings of the word and then the gist व्यवसा आत्मिका व्यवसाय आत्मिका द वेरी फर्स्ट वर्ड व्हाट डज इट मीन मीन्स वन पॉइंटेड सिंगल पॉइंटेड डिटर्मिनेशन बुद्धि ही सिंगल माइंड डोंट कीप जंपिंग लाइक अ मंकी फ्रॉम वन एंड टू अनदर गो टू एस्ट्रोलॉजर गो टू सम गुरु गो टू सम शास्त्री गर्ल नो हैव वन वेरी क्लियर बहुशाखा मीन्स मेनी ब्रांचेस बहुशाखा 
it is referring to the wandering mind with many branches of thoughts wandering mind with many branches of thoughts it's like a rolling stone there is a saying in english rolling stone gathers no moss it's precisely he is pointing that buddhayor devasayinam these are anantascha is anantascha is endless ananta krishna endless krishna anantascha means endless endless starts of the one who is irresolute who is confused these got branches of thoughts fickle minded so the final summary of this particular verse is that he says endless our thoughts are branches of thoughts people get confused with this those this is all reflective of the person who is without a determination he is, doesn't have a single goal he starts jumping here and there and wavering this is not the sign of a karma yogi this is a sign of a person who is a confused person so he is leading you on to what should you do he so, is talking about the person who is now mm. the uh, the person who is uh, uh having this kind of confused thinking without a single pointed determination on how to really work in life so in other words he is setting the mm. route map for karma yoga so once is like i will at later stage Did Krishna be telling what, which, how to pick that option, or is he just saying doesn't no, matter no. what option? No, no. He is actually. This is going to be. This is only a very, very, very small introduction. Yeah, yeah. So he is going to continue in yeah. some future chapters. Okay. So There's what? So I'm, many verses. So only like from this verse, he is saying it doesn't matter which option you pick. Is it what he is telling, or he is saying you have to be just single, you have to be clear focused. Yes. Yes. That. Single okay. determination. Don't wander with too many thoughts, but have your goal very clear. like i mentioned the goal of selling moss it was not he, he despite all the failures he had one single goal to get the pleasure out of raising not really on winning alone he lost a majority more than 50% of the race he lost but when he won and then he had the pleasure of so you must know what really is going to please you which eventually should be the ultimate mm. that is going to be I mentioned the Maslow's theory of hierarchy, yeah, yeah, yeah. the top pyramid. Right now you are in the bottom pyramid, so you have to go step yeah. by step in order to reach that goal. And the path you should take, you should be clear on that path. That's what it means. We will find lot of wisdom coming up as we go yeah. along. Okay, let's go to verse forty-two now. प्रवदन्त्यपिपाश्चिता पार्थ मिस्लीडिंग अदर्स थ्रू द ओन various in thinking bad qualities and you will find he is highlighting is because you must avoid those qualities so he is uh, pointing it out what is wrong there uh, actually in vedas as well as in gita also it is said there are basically three types of attributes people who probably know them so sattvic rajas and tamasas satvik is something which is selfless action you are uh, 
contributing to your inner growth. Satsang is coming, like your uh, nephew Satvik, mm -hmm. a very nice name. You may produce material growth, but that is only secondary. You can look for riches and all that, but that's only secondary. The primary goal is inner growth. I want to yeah. have a goal which is ultimately leading me to permanent happiness. Rajas, karmani, self-centered action, unmindful of others, this kind of selfish, you know, that I want everything for myself, I want to be happy, so I want a car, I want a house, I don't care how others, mm -hmm. it's very self-centered Rajas. Primarily contributing to the material growth of a person, even though there may be a slow spiritual progress. The third kind, thamsik, <laughs> like the care, Good, bad and the ugly. <laughs> so this is the ugliest part. It's selfish, not only selfish, it is harmful to others. It is something which is where the spiritual progress is nil. I want everything for myself, but I don't want the other person to get it. On the contrary, I am going to hit him hard. So you find uh, these three attributes or qualities or gunas. Is that in everybody, but in different proportions, mm -hmm. fortunately. So, you have uh, the uh, people with different combination, but when your proportion of sattvic goes up, your progress to an inner spiritual growth becomes better. So, our efforts are to increase that sattvic content. So, here he says, some people call Avi Paschitaha. Avi Paschitaha. What does it mean? The unwise are the stupid people. Avi Paschitaha. Who rely only on material pressures, criticizing everything. There is uh, you know, when you have, uh, in good old days, 60s, we had uh, a mattress called Dunlo Pillow. Mm. Yeah, yeah. My, my father used to say, you can buy the most expensive Dunlo Pillow, it doesn't guarantee you sleep. Mm. <laughs> so, you have, can have any amount of material wealth, it still doesn't guarantee you happiness. On the contrary, there are many problems associated with it. We'll come to later. Mm. So, here he's talking about the unwise are stupid people who rely on material pleasures. And <clears throat> Veda Badarataha. They criticize Vedas. So what is there? There's nothing much in that. All rituals, useless fellows. <laughs> so that kind of a so here Yaba, which this Pushpitam is Pushpa means flowers. Pitam vacham. Vacham means what? Speaking. Flowery, butter coated, honey coated words. You know, there are some people who talk so sweetly. Like there is a definition of triple mark. They describe health in such beautiful words, you, you long to go there. <laughs> you feel like going there. <laughs> so beautifully put, so nicely put, so flowery and so honey, dripping with honey. You carried by those people. So he says, these people, Vacham, Veda Vatra, Kutpitam Vacham, Parthaha Arjuna, Nanya Jasthiti Vadinaha. Vadinaha is saying, Anvat is other than the unwise or the stupid people rebel in speaking very flowery speeches, flowery words. Taking pleasure in quoting the Vedas, oh Partha, there is nothing in them, what is there? It is all only rituals, this doesn't mean anything. Don't follow them. <laughs> follow me, I will guarantee you happiness. So I, I remember long ago I went to New Orleans, you know. We had a, a meeting when I was in India, I came all the way there. And my daughter had born, you know, New Orleans is full of crime, be careful. And I landed at 1.30 a.m. It was pitch dark and I had a black driver to drive the taxi. And uh, while going, he went on talking. 
So, uh, so you first time to New York? I said, yes, first time. Uh, you know this city? Uh, I don't know much about the city. Oh, here people come. They're very happy, you know. They eat here, they drink here, they make merry, everything is done. Well, and they, they die very happily here. <laughs> <laughs> so, there are some people who believe they eat, drink and be merry. It seems to be the only motto they've got. Nothing more than that. And they talk beautiful words. So he's cautioning mm -hmm. against such people that these people who are following that philosophy of eat, drink and marry, they have no goal. They have no conviction whatsoever. They are the people who do not have any determination or ultimate goal in their life. So, proceeding further, the next slogan, which is 43. Kamatma Banaha Svargapara Kamatma Svargapara Janma Karma Phala Pradam Janma Karma Phala Pradam Kriya Vishesha Bahulam Kriya Vishesha Bahulam Bhogaishwar Yagatim Prati Bhogaishwar Yagatim Prati Again, as I said, is talking about these kind of people in this slogan also he is talking about the same thing he points out how some people are so selfish that they are ridden with desires they seek heaven materialistic heaven and uh, in philosophy we call those as maya now there is a big difference between uh, happiness and pleasure happiness is ultimate which you want without any problem, mukti. Pleasure is something temporary. It gives you temporary. It, it goes off. So it's like an illusion. So such people, you know, they will laugh at others, sattvic people, saying that you are all orthodox, you don't know how to enjoy life, you go and listen to Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> this is not uh, befitting you. You should be dynamic, you should go out and uh, eat, drink and be merry. <laughs> that kind of thing. So, you find in, in business, we have attended numerous parties, rich people, wealthy businessmen, they throw a party. What for? Not for your personal happiness. It is for their own benefit that they want to get something done. So that's networking as they call it in modern language. So they have a selfish motive. The commercials have a selfish motive. You switch on the television in the morning, you get bombarded with advertisements. In 15 minutes news, probably 3 minutes is news, 12 minutes is only commercials. They make all sorts of promises. You use this cosmetic, uh, within 7 days you are guaranteed to be like a celebrity. Your skin will shine. And people go and fall for it. This is free. And you go inside and you know what it's what is the hanging in that. You know, <laughs> there was a person who was in jail and then somebody asked him why you're in jail. He said, I stole just a piece of rope, you know, and they put me in jail. What? Just a piece of rope and you are in jail? No, no, there was something more than it. No, they, you know what happened? I didn't realize it. There was a cow attached to the rope. <laughs> 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 That's how the people describe it. They put it a very small, like a tip of the iceberg and the bottom is big. <laughs> so you find those kind of people who are promising you those many things, there's always those hidden lines, what you don't see, small lines. They lay a trap. So, Kama Manaha is full of desire, Swarga Para, with material to heaven as their goal, Janma Karma, Janma Karma Phala Pradam, leading to a new birth again, Punari Jammam, Punari Pijananam, Punari Pimaranam. They go to another birth as the result of the works, Kriya Visesha Bahulam. They are exuberant with various specific actions which are aimed at those materials to heaven. And Bhogai, 
భోగ ఐశ్వర్య గతి ప్రతి భోగ మీన్స్ ప్లెషర్ ఐశ్వర్య మీన్స్ వెల్త్ గతి హోప్ హే ఫో ఫర్ ద అటైన్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ప్లెషర్ అండ్ వెల్త్ సో యునో ఇన్ భారత యుద్ధ యూ హ్యావ్ ఎ ట్రాప్ లైడ్ అవుట్ బై ద్రోణ అండ్ భీష్మా టు క్యాష్ జిస్ట్రా ఇట్స్ కాల్ చంద్రభ్యూహ యూ హోల్డ్ ఫిట్ it's a maze hmm. and you get into it you are trapped like an insect you don't know how to come out hmm. unfortunately abhimanyu got caught in that he couldn't come so the kind of bhogai aishwarya is like the chandra vyuha is like a trap you get inside don't know how to get out because it is cyclic you want more and more and more and more and then it become very difficult for you to get out of it Yeah. So that's what he says here and you have to watch out that. The chakra view actually how it is is it's like the art of war by Shun Tzu. If one person is trapped there's 10 circles of yes. warriors around. Right. And they start progressing in. So even if you manage to get through one circle and if you could try five maybe but that's about even right. That's how it is. <laughs> that's how it is. They trap it. Okay, we go on to the next one, which is verse 44. Bhogaishwarya prasaktanam Bhogaishwarya prasaktanam Payapakhrita chetasam Payapakhrita chetasam Vyavasayatmika buddhihi Vyavasayatmika buddhihi Samadhauna vidhiyate Samadhauna vidhiyate So here Lord Krishna talks about the lustful persons in the past who do not use their powers of discrimination. People find uh, bhogam or pleasures very tempting. It's too strong for people to overcome it. I wouldn't say all people but many people. Money, power, liquor, gambling, smoking, pawn, you know, these are all addictive. You find, you can't get out of it. You ask somebody who is already in it, he finds it very difficult to come out of it. It's very difficult. Once you get caught with that, it stays for many people. So, if they want to continue in that and they have no money, they get corrupted. And they will go to any means to get what they want. What is happening with politicians, mm-hmm. with many other people, even ordinary people I have seen, some people who get let to ruin, complete bankruptcy, because just, they just can't get out of it. Liquor I have seen is ruined some families, particularly in India where there is no control. Mm-hmm. So you have, there are many, many cases where people resort to all sorts of means. I remember one case where, a clerk in the AG's office in Chennai, he stole a car. He went to the CBA showroom and then uh, came to the newspaper when I was there. Man was arrested. Mm. He, uh, they gave you two sets of keys, you know. Mm. And the salesman gave both the keys. He kept on the table. He was watching who was buying it. He had all these, these uh, software people mm. wear the label. Mm. He knew the name and everything. He quietly pocketed one mm. pair of keys. Mm. Disappeared. and he knew where this man was working mm. so the other man was looking at he could find the second pair mm. so the salesman looked at he must have fallen somewhere i'll get you don't worry about mm-hmm. it i'll take mm-hmm. it out must have fallen under the table or something so he went to the office carrying a the driving his new car this fellow went that the same afternoon mm. he went inside and picked up the car and came out but unfortunately for him the cell phone of that particular person the owner was left to the car and they tracked him the mm. same evening mm. he was arrested <laughs> So this is how it happens. They go to any extent in order to... Mm-hmm. So the corrupt uh, uh, people and uh, this is uh, Satyam computers, you know the mm-hmm. case what happened. And they have Lehman Brothers and uh, Raja Ratram and so on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> countless example of how people attach to pleasure and money. They go to any extent. Mm-hmm. So, Bhogesh Varge Prasaktana, the people who are totally attached to pleasure and wealth. Ayapakhyata Chetasam, whose minds are drawn away 
and who conscious is stifled somehow. Devasatvika buddhihi is the <coughs> determination powers or discrimination powers. Buddhihi doesn't stand to reason. Samadona vidyate. Samadhi here is equal, is not fixed. They argue as who believes in hell or punishment? Nobody. No, no. There are people who are making that kind of money. They don't go to prison. They are quite happy. Whereas I am here, honest man, I get punished for nothing. You know, that kind of argument comes in. So, if you take just wealthy nations, take America for example. I saw the news yesterday where uh, one of these uh, comedians was entertaining people in prison. Showed him. Mm. And then they say one out of hundred Americans was in jail sometime or other. One out of hundred. There are more jails than universities and colleges. Wealthy nation. These, these are all startling facts and figures. So you have many of these kind of things where uh, people seek pleasures. But they don't get it. They think they get it, but they don't get it. Like for babies, you give what is called a pacifier. Mm -hmm. They go and uh, suck at the nipple. Mm -hmm. And they seem to be getting milk, but there's no milk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the baby gets uh, illusion that, that I'm, I'm going to get, I'm going to get, and but it doesn't get anything. Uh, it keeps on sucking the <laughs> nipple, mm -hmm. and maybe it starts sucking the thumb. Mm -hmm. And eventually, that's why probably it's called a sucker. Mm. The term sucker has come from that mm. <laughs> in America. Someone who is easily tricked or who is mm. cheated here. So, the gist of this is that there is no firm mind, determinate mind, for those who cling to pleasure and comfort, power, whose discrimination powers are completely corrupted. They get impacted. So, going further, Trigunya Vishaya Veda, Trigunya Vishaya Veda, Nistraigunya Bavarjuna, Nistraigunya Bavarjuna, Ridbanto Nitya Satvasto, Ridbanto Nitya Satvasto, Nir Yoga Chema Atmavan, Nir Yoga Chema Atmavan. The Vedas do, are not against your uh, making money and making a living. Dharmartha Kama Moksham, Aram Purul Idbam Vidu, they gave you support uh, for material accomplishments, not that they are against it. We spend a lot of time and talent to meet our wants. I had a professor of mechanical engineering by name Dade, who used to, his parting words, money is important for you, but not the most important. <laughs> So, the, the life should not be dictated by material. You can have it, but don't think that is the main goal. So, Traigunya Vishaya. <clears throat> there are three attributes we talk about. You should, uh, without this Nistraigunya means not. Without those three attributes, you should manage. Be free. Nidvantvo means pair of opposites. Mm. What are opposites? Antonyms. I mentioned in the very so first book. The mm. wealth and poverty, extremes and sorrows, our own happiness. They, they are all opposite. So, Nidvantvo means you should not have those, you should not be inflicted or affected by those two opposites. In other words, <coughs> Sukadukam, you should be able to yes. have it as equals. Nitya Sattvastho, maintain your Sattvic qualities. Nir Yoga Chema Atmavan. Yoga Chema means what? Yes. Very happy. Mm. Nir Yoga Chema means <laughs> actually acquiring those very things for life, acquisitions and preservation. You 
keep amassing wealth, but preserving them becomes a problem. You buy a big home, you need security, you want to have uh, uh, your dog or something like that. So, you have 15 bedrooms, what do you do with 15 bedrooms? <laughs> Maintenance becomes expensive, you have to move the lawn. Yesterday our lawnmower broke down, you have to go rush and uh, get it repaired. So, 100 problems, uh, your home gets flooded, you have to call the insurance company and so on. So, the more you have, the more problems are there. Not that you don't have it, but you enlarge it beyond your capacity, that becomes really a big issue. What he says is here, reduce your Kamya Karmani. There is the Rajasik and Dhamasik qualities. Reduce. Cut it down, reduce it and focus it on something. Mm -hmm. Your, <coughs> so, by associating with uh, Mahans and uh, you have the Sattvic people like Adi Sankaracharya said that Satsangat so, in other words, you should manage and overcome those three gunas, O Arjuna, Nishkamo Bhava. Get rid of those wild desires. Do not be a slave to the pulls of those three attributes. The opposite quality things functions, you should be able to maintain your equilibrium. That is the guest of this particular slogan in verse 45. Learn to face opposing experiences with a balanced mind. Going further. Yavanartha Udapane. Yavanartha Udapane. Sarvataha. Sambhutaha Sampluto dake Sampluto dake Tavan sarveshu vedeshu Tavan sarveshu vedeshu Brahmanasya vijanataha Brahmanasya vijanataha Now Krishna is slowly telling him the benefits of Karma Yoga. Why should one adopt this Karma Yoga? You know if you say finite, what does it mean? Countable. Limited. Limited. Infinite means? Unlimited. Now, is the finite included in infinite or no? Is the finite included yes. in infinite? Yes. Yes. yes, of course. But is the infinite included in finite? No. no. So, he is pointing out, he is giving an analogy of Let's say a small pond of water, you take it, it is a limited hmm. water, you can use it, make it go dry also because it's very small. Actually I disagree with that statement, how can the finite be included in the infinite? Infinite means unlimited, if, you have no limitation. If infinite was, if, if it was a subset of all finite things, then infinite would essentially be finite as a mathematical function. So, I'm not talking about mathematics, I'm talking about limited and unlimited. Unlimited. limited. If you have, let us say, a small pond of water, it is limited. Okay. But you take an ocean. Yeah, I get it. There are so many ponds of water. Or the spiritual yeah. fight. The ocean. Uh, if it's not mathematical. If it is an ocean, it is kind of infinite because it's unlimited. You don't... Uh, it yeah. may be limited from mathematical angle, so many gallons of water. but. When you look Not at it, it is right, yeah. huge, so yeah, yeah, huge, yeah, I get it, I get it. that uh, a pond of water will be a small thing. So here he is talking, Udapane Sarvataha. Udapane is actually, <laughs> it is a small pond of water, like a well, you can mm. say. And when you have a lake like Michigan, who is going to dig a well here? <laughs> you get so much of water there. So the analogy is giving it because, it is like the benefits you derive from a lake to an enlightened Brahmana. Brahmana here doesn't mean referring to Brahmins, one who is wise. wise. One who is wise. All the Vedas are useful to him like a vast lake. 
It is unlimited in wisdom. It is not something which is small, not limited, but it is unlimited. So here he says, Tavan Sarveshu Vedeshu Brahminasya Vijanataha. So the wisdom that a Brahmana or the wise can get mm. from the Vedas is mm. like a huge lake that you can get, not from a small pond. Mm. So this is uh, the list of the slogan that uh, Vedas contain everything mm. that, that you can get unlimited wisdom. And not unlike what you get in temporary small points, mm. which you may get from small books or... But where, is, where does uh, Karma Yoga come in this one? No, this is only a beginning. You have not gone into Karma Yoga. He is only giving you an introduction of what is this. This, that, the, he is trying to say that the knowledge is unlimited. Mm. He is going to talk about Karma Yoga in subsequent chapters also. He is just giving you an inkling. It is an overview really. Now, the next one is a very, very important sloga and it is being quoted by many people everywhere as part of the Gita, list of it. Karmanyeva adhikaraste Karmanyeva adhikaraste Mafaleshu kadachana Mafaleshu kadachana Makarma falahetur bhoor Makarma falahetur bhoor Mate Mate Sangostva Karmani Mate Sangostva Karmani I am saying that Ma separately because it means not. Ma here is referring to not. Earlier also you have Karmanya Adhigara say Ma Faleshu. Ma is actually not. So this is probably the most misinterpreted verse in the whole of Bhagavad Gita and people use it to their own advantage. It says, you have right to your karma or work, but not to the fruits of it. So people can ask, uh, why are we working? We are all working for some reward. How can somebody work without any benefit? A donkey will do it, a donkey will carry all the load. He doesn't expect any rewards. I think what it means is do your work sincerely and the fruit will follow, right? Well, it is, uh, you know, words sometimes uh, confuse. The fruits here really doesn't mean the results that will come totally to you. It is not totally to you. You know, uh, people misinterpret what they talk. I heard uh, someone saying, uh, an American went to a village in India and then he asked the villager, any great man born in this village? Oh, no, no, only baby small babies are born here. And Sadhaj went for an interview. He says, do you know MS office? <laughs> he says, well sir, I don't know, but you give me the address, I'll go and find <laughs> out. <laughs> so the, the Vedas have got their own language. You should uh, be able to <laughs> understand it in the right Thanks. perspective. Yeah. You know, there is something in Tamil, which they say a beautiful face. They say, Paul Vadiyum Moham. They say it's a face which is dripping with milk, so beautiful. <laughs> but just imagine if it really starts dripping with milk, how ugly it will be. <laughs> <laughs> So here, the uh, uh, point is really, fruits or actions, you know, they, fruits follow actions. And uh, sometimes you get immediate results, sometimes it takes many years also. You want to do a two minute Maggi, you can cook it, you get it immediately. But supposing I want a mango tree and I put a seed here, it may take uh, years for me to get the fruits. I will not even live to enjoy it. That's what it means here. So what it means here, you have a lesson that you have a free will or a choice or right. You have a first line of karma and adhigaraste. You have the right to choose what you want to do. But what you don't have is really the entire total fruits which may or may not come to you. You may now, for example, I am conducting this uh, class today 
I did, I have contributed something towards it. My computer did something. My wife cooperated with me. My son cooperated with me. So everything is there. You all come here. Everybody has contributed towards this particular action. What suppose the electricity goes off? Not within my control, not within your control. So I may not get the fruits of my action, even though you all come here and a lot of preparation has been done. So here you have to be understand very clearly, you have to hope for the best, but be prepared to face the worst that you may not get the results. Mm. And action is most important as you have a choice as to what you want to do. And every time you work, don't worry too much about it because a lot of energy is just spent in worrying. I am doing this, will I get it or not? I am doing work, will I get my promotion or not? People spend energy in that. And that produces stress. Will my boss like me or not? Many questions that come in the mind. But you should not misinterpret it as results are predetermined and, and take a fatalistic view. I am not getting what I want, so I am stopping it. The next time starts about that. Ma karma phalai hetu arbhamo, to sangha aspa karmani. That is, there are people who say, well, I am not going to do any more of this because I am tired, frustrated, I don't want to do it. Stop it at that. Don't let it lead to inaction. That's what Krishna says is, let not your focus on the fruits of action deter you from continuing with your action if you don't get it. You should continue with your action and not stop it at that particular point. In other words, <clears throat> if you want really inner growth, you should be able to prepare to receive any type of results. You work for it, you do your best. But by any chance, due to any other forces acting, you don't get what you are aiming at. Do not be disappointed. Do not give up what you want to do. So, often misinterpreted, but the, it has to be interpreted in the right way. That you have the right, you have the choice. But do not be disappointed in case you don't get it. I have another question. Mm -hmm. Is the same as telling that you do your action, but you really do not control the outcome. Is it still the same yeah, meaning? Correct, correct. Right? In the sense that you do not control the outcome. Control so the outcome. You don't most, control the outcome. You will try to do it, but uh, you cannot control hmm. the outcome. Because most of us... For example, do. there are so many things which are outside your span of control. Like the weather, like forces of nature, which are outside your control. There, there are forces acting. You are going in a particular path and you want something to happen. You are trying your level best. Do not give up because it may not really produce the result which you are expecting. But you keep at it. You keep at it. You keep at it. So, this is actually a motivational speech or verse by Lord Krishna. that He says, don't give up your efforts. Okay. Let's go on to the next one, which is verse 48. Mama, can you repeat that thing once again? The meaning of that. Now that Kashyap is here, I want him to listen. Just to that oh, last sentence. That? Just the last uh, fine, just of that. You know what is this uh, verse? Shall we go back to the other verse? Can you okay. say that? Karmanyeva adhikaraste Karmanyeva adhikaraste Mafaleshu kadachana Mafaleshu kadachana Ma karma falahe turbuma Ma karma falahe turbuma Te sango Te sango Aspa karmani Aspa karmani you can recite. <laughs> so what it means is that you should keep working unmindful of 
any disappointment. So supposing you want to go to, uh, let us say, Disneyland. And the day you go there, it is raining and they say it is closed. Will you start crying? <laughs> Doesn't matter. You can op You can probably go the next day because it will be open. Okay? So you have to keep doing what you want. And you are going to do uh, work in, in, at school and uh, and the teacher says, uh, no Kashyap, this is not the way to do it. You will start crying? No. no. Okay. You will know how to do it correctly. Next time you will attempt again, right? Mm -hmm. That's the way to do. That's the way to go. So don't get discouraged at school mm -hmm. or any time you go out and play. And supposing you lose a game, will you start crying? Good, very good. <laughs> That's the way it should be. Okay, okay. Now, we want to stop here or shall we continue? I have uh, another six slogans in it. I have to go take a call. So okay, okay. Like. So then I, I think uh, we, will, we will stop at this uh, point because we normally have it for one hour. Mm -hmm. We have just completed one hour. So we will continue with this uh, next Sunday evening, uh, same time, 7 to 8. Actually, I want to complete uh, the second chapter before I go to California, okay. uh, the week after. Okay. So let's try to do that. Kumari should be also there next week. Okay. Sarvatra Govindana Masankitanam Govindana Govindana